Around 200 years ago, London became the largest city in the world. This was an exciting time. The first railways were introduced, the National Gallery was built, and the city established itself as a global hub of trade. However, it was a place tormented by frequent epidemics. Some of these were well-recognized infections of the day, like smallpox or cholera. But one of them had doctors scratching their heads. Hundreds of patients were being admitted with unexplained headaches, vomiting, seizures, and swelling of the legs. Some of them, strangely, were also going blind, often hours before their death. Now, it might surprise you to hear that the culprit of this was no infection. Rather, it was something that we couldn't yet detect, but affect many of us to some extent today. High blood pressure. What Dr. Richard Bright revealed to us in these descriptions was perhaps one of the earliest hints that the eyes could harbor diseases outside of the eyes. The problem was that technology hadn't kept up with scientific understanding, and we had to wait several decades before the invention of this, the ophthalmoscope, when we could reliably distinguish what was causing vision loss in these patients. So if you were to look at the back of my eye, the retina, this is what you'd see. A circular pink structure of the optic nerve, from which emanate the major blood vessels of the retina. What might Richard Bright have seen if he was able to examine his patient's eyes? Well, probably something like this. Now, on first glance, these images might appear quite similar, but look closer and you'll notice red blots, suggestive of bleeding, fluffy yellow areas, indicating swelling or blocked nerves, and in severe cases, a lack of clarity of the border of the optic nerve, suggestive of swelling of the brain. Fast forward almost 200 years, and we know that our eyes show much more than just the state of our blood pressure. Changes in the retina can reflect a multitude of diseases, from common conditions like diabetes, to uncommon infections like tuberculosis. In fact, you'd be hard pressed to think of a chronic disease that doesn't have a manifestation somewhere within the eye. Now, it doesn't take an expert to look at these two images and realize that they're different. But not all changes are as clearly discernible to us. What if I were to instead show you another pair of seemingly normal images, but tell you that one of these patients will develop a stroke within the next three years, and that this prediction can be made through the eye? It's unlikely that any of us would be much more accurate than tossing a coin. One option for identifying structures that may not be obvious to us is deep learning, a subfield of artificial intelligence where patterns are discovered using large data sets. With this tool, we've realized that images of the retina don't just tell us about disease, they can tell us about ourselves. In the last few years, we've seen that eyes can show our age, our sex, whether we smoke, whether we're anemic, and give us an indication of our risk of future events like heart attack or stroke, all from a single picture of the back of the eye. Now the focus on heart attack and stroke is deliberate. Collectively, these so-called cardiovascular diseases are the leading cause of mortality worldwide. But many of us will have personal experience of a new villain that has emerged as the number one cause of death in the United Kingdom, and that is dementia. Dementia is rising at an alarming rate in the context of the aging population. And even more concerning is that it's estimated that around 50% of cases are undiagnosed globally. So it's important that we develop effective strategies for identifying those at risk. Modern scanning technology has not only redefined how we treat eye diseases, but they've helped further our understanding of the links between the eye and the brain. The retina is derived from the same tissue as the brain, and the circuitry connecting the two means that changes in one are often reflected in the other. For example, one landmark study from the Netherlands showed that thinner nerves were found in the retinas of people with dementia 
and also several years before developing any symptoms of it. They were able to show this with less than 100 patients. But applying deep learning to this problem requires much larger data sets. And that's why we spent the last couple years at Moorfields, the largest eye hospital in Europe and North America, linking our retinal scans with national hospital admissions data. Our outside cohort comprises more than 5 million retinal scans, and 15,000 patients in our cohort have developed dementia. The prospect of eye scans for dementia screening is attractive, given the challenge of diagnosis. This typically relies on symptoms, which are a late manifestation of the disease, or the concerns of a friend or family member. And awareness is only the beginning. Along this arduous path, individuals first need to consult their general practitioner, complete a non-specific questionnaire, be referred to a specialist, and have blood tests to rule out secondary causes of dementia. Finally, they need to undergo scans, which are often expensive, time-consuming, and potentially invasive, all before revisiting their specialist to discuss the results. All this invariably leads to frustration and anxiety. But high-resolution eye scanning technology can show us even subtler changes with microscope-like resolution in a non-invasive, risk-free approach that takes seconds to acquire. And much like the field of genetics, where sequencing a person's genome is a fraction of the cost it was 10 years ago, each season sees greater affordability in retinal scanning technology. To put this into perspective, at Moorfields, we did around 25,000 eye scans in the 12 months of 2008. We now do more than that each month. And this technology isn't just limited to the hospital or clinic. It's increasingly available in the community. For example, Specsavers, one of the world's largest optician businesses, now has high-resolution scanning in nearly 700 of its branches in the United Kingdom. But if eye scans are a potential solution, how do we actively encourage the public to consider having them? Well, vision is precious. Surveys consistently show that we treasure our sight above any other sense. Some are even willing to trade five years of life to remain with their sight intact. And this is not just an opinion. This powerful sentiment translates into our health-seeking behavior. And here's an example. When you turn 40, chances are that you'll be invited to a general health check, where among other things, your risk of having a heart attack or stroke will be estimated. But how many of us actually take that up? Between 2009 and 2013, in the United Kingdom, it was around 9%. But what if we consider a similar age group, similar time, but instead rephrase the question? How many do you think report seeing their optometrist at least every four years? A very telling 80%. The current landscape of community healthcare and technological development has us at an exciting crossroads. And not just in Europe and North America, but low and middle income countries are also undergoing infrastructural transformation with the introduction of affordable eye scanning technology and regional eye health programs. Some of these scans can even be taken using your standard smartphone. By combining our understanding of how the eyes change in systemic diseases with artificial intelligence, the growing availability of eye scanning technology, and our natural concern for our vision, we can democratize access to a comprehensive health evaluation. Not through a visit to your primary care doctor, blood tests, or a long wait for that hospital MRI scan, but through a single picture taken in the blink of an eye.